Stuttgart today we have a very sunshiny fall day. It's warmer than usual and we have beautiful sunshine and blue sky. It looks so lovely if it weren't for the fact that everywhere around us we have this pandemic and we have uh, numbers that are going up and therefore we have a, now a mild lockdown for the next month. And for all of you who are listening, wherever you happen to be, I'm sure you're in similar situation. And so we could be in despair or at least in a negative modus if we didn't realize that God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit invites us into his presence to hear his word and to be in fellowship with him and with other believers. So it's in that sense today that I welcome all of you into the service and into this moment of hearing God's word. And let's pray with each other so that our ears will be open and our hearts will be open to hear what the Spirit wants to say to us today. Let us pray. Father, we thank you today that we can listen to your word, that it is not in any way a hindrance, the circumstances around us, but that you want to speak into our situation, into our circumstances, by your spirit, through your word. Help us to hear what you want to say to us this day, we pray in your name, amen. With today's sermon, we are beginning a monthly series on faith, and particularly the qualities that we need to live a life of faith right now. We find a definition of faith in Hebrews chapter 11, 1 through 2, and hear these words. Faith is the confidence that what we hope for will actually happen. It gives us assurance about things we cannot see. Through their faith, the people in days of old earned a good reputation. And then down to verse 13. All these people died still believing what God had promised them. They did not receive what was promised, but they saw it from a distance and welcomed it. And in between, verse 6 says this, And it is impossible to please God without faith. Anyone who wants to come to him must believe that God exists, and that he rewards those who sincerely seek him. We saw last week that Joseph possessed the confidence in the, promise, in the promises of God. He lived to be 110. Now that's an age that I don't really care about reaching. Um, that is a little old for me. Uh, and he'd been carried off to Egypt at the age of 17. And so if you do a little bit of simple math, you see that for 93 years, he believed without receiving what had been promised. 93 years in Egypt, even though he had confidence that the promised land was going to be given to his people. Moses, you recall, spent 40 years tending sheep before God revealed the next steps to him in the burning bush. Only after this time out, a generational time out, 40 years, did God commission him to go to Egypt and help lead his people out to the promised land. Jeremiah, the Old Testament prophet, is recorded as saying, for the past 23 years, the Lord has been giving me his messages. I have been faithfully passing them on to you, he said to all the Israelites, but you have not listened. 23 years, 40 years, 93 years. These are just a few examples of people who had faith, but did not experience the fulfillment of what they anticipated would someday happen. How do people of faith manage to live and keep their confidence when everything in their lives seems postponed? Part of the answer is found in the word we want to focus on this evening, and that word is patience. Remember, it does not matter how much 
faith you have, as if quantity would be speeding up the realization of the promises. Jesus told his disciples, you only need a mustard seed of faith. Not quantity, but quality is needed. A true seed. A true seed of faith. Something that can actually grow because it is genuine. Now this in itself should cause us to think about what kind of faith we have. Do I really believe that Jesus came for me? Have I received him into my life? Is that the, the seed faith that I have? Or am I pretending when I go to church to have faith but I really don't? That's an interesting question right at the beginning of the sermon today. But I want to focus on the quality of patience. And so we could ask, why is patience part of the way that faith is lived? If we pick up this thought like of being a seed, then the images of the farmer come to my mind at least. A farmer who plants the seed into the ground will not have an instant harvest. There is the rhythm of the year that he has to honor. Springtime and harvest with summer in between. And one quality he needs in living out this rhythm of time is patience. Patience is the inner quality to wait for something. I remember a farmer who exasperated me many years ago. Well, why was that, you might ask? Well, to every question you might give to this particular farmer, there was always a long pause, almost like a hesitancy to say anything. And then slowly, ever slow, ever so slowly, an answer would come. Sort of like the seed sprouting and slowly coming up through the earth. There were no quick fixes for that farmer, but a sense that some answers require time. Like waiting for the seeds to grow. Patience as a learned response. No farmer would complain after he just planted the seed that the harvest was not there. You would think, what's the matter with you? You just planted the seed. Patience is the capacity to wait out a time period without complaining. It's the capacity to go through parts of life and not be damaged in this waiting process. I love big old trees. I remember some huge cottonwood trees back home in Minnesota where it took three or four people stretching their arms out to make a circle around the base of the tree. They were huge. Did such a tree spring up overnight? No, it's not like a dandelion. Any oak tree or giant redwood or cottonwood or gnarly big olive tree requires time to grow. It's like the seed planted has patience. First the roots, the seed says, then the stalk, the seed says, then the branches, and then slowly the move, movement upward. Such a tree is beautiful, and it's like observing really what patience looks like. If we have confidence in our seed of faith that has been planted into the soil of our life, then patience is the quality we need to help it grow. First, the roots going down in God's word and understanding what Jesus really wants from us. Then we begin to come up into life and discover how to live this life of faith out there. And then we move upward and fruit on the branches has to be developed, you see. Faith is not a hothouse plant or product, but the consequence of development over time. 
You know, there's no instant saint that I have seen. Usually saints, or people we call saints, have been, become persons of faithful quality over a long period of time. They have given faith a chance to grow in them. To let things take their time requires patience. Patience in the process of spiritual growth. Faith lived with patience means one believing that God says, believing what God says and what the circumstances seem to dictate is not what we focus on. So believing what God says and not the circumstances. In the same chapters where Jeremiah said that he has been giving the people God's messages for 23 years, but they haven't listened, there were other verses in that same area around that text describing prophets who are telling people just exactly what they want to hear. Only these are finally false prophets, and they are not helping the people at all. In our times, there are all sorts of messages being spoken out which are neither true nor helpful. This week, Alfred got several telephone calls from people who had seen on a TV channel, Bibel TV in Germany, somebody who was preaching about the fact that the Lord was going to come back now in about 40 days and that they should sell everything and get ready for the Lord's coming. And of course, if they didn't know what to do with their money, they could send it to him and he would certainly know what to do. What a scam playing on the fears of people. Send me your money and I'll take care of things for you. Really? What kind of false message is that? You know, there are people who want quick fixes. And so there are voices speaking to these desires. And of course, they get a lot of good number of likes on social media. People like quick fixes. Government leaders, on the other hand, have a tougher time selling the truth that this pandemic, for example, will take time to go away. People have no patience, but actually Christians have been taught from the beginning of their faith experience that patience is needed to get to the promise. Part of this is God's timing. Remember, it was God who said, as Peter quotes in his epistle, our Lord's patience gives people time to be saved. If God has patience so that people can get into a life of faith, then maybe that's a, a basic kind of understanding we need to have about faith itself. Patience is needed to grow in faith. In these days of COVID-19, perhaps we need to dust off our focus, believing in God's plan and not our own, in God's timetable and not our own. Patience begins in believing what God says and then remaining in your position in the place where God has placed you. All of us have a calling as persons of faith. We share a common faith in what God has done for us in Jesus, but each of us live out our calling in different places. And we all know it is easy to run away and abandon our post when times get tough. Patience is the quality needed to stay put in our place. Obviously, this has implications for every believer right now. What's your place now in this time of the pandemic? It requires a huge amount of patience right now to remain in place. For example, if you're a doctor or a nurse or a caretaker. I've seen some reports of people who went through the first wave of the virus, this pandemic, and were working in the hospitals. And now facing the second wave, they're just about not able to go to work. 
They need patience with the people, patience with the circumstances, and patience with the problems that emerge. Without patience, they can't do their work. And how about teachers? It's difficult to prepare lessons online or teach with a mask on or help the pupils to remain positive in this pandemic. And as Christian students, how can you accept the restrictions and not become frustrated? This will require patience. We're in family life. Everyone's nerves are stretched at the moment. And only patience with one another and with this particular time frame will help each family to get through this pandemic. Believing what God says and remaining in your position and then relinquishing the demand for immediate rewards. Patience can help us to let our desires for an instant gratification simply go. There, this is where we need patience portrayed in the lives of biblical characters or in the reading of Christian biographies. How did they live their lives? How did they nurture a sense of patience in circumstances that were not easy? They believed in what God said and lived out their lives with a sense of patience that what he said would happen even if they did not see it in their lifetime. Perhaps we simply have to confess right now that we are an impatient people, that we really, really don't like to wait. We have gotten into or used to instant soup for example, that only takes minutes instead of more homemade soup, which takes hours. Has this desire for instant gratification affected our faith development? Is this why we want to believe health and wealth schemes and theologies? Or we want healing on demand? Or speak the word of faith and bingo, you have what you want? The danger is here, of course, to be simply impatient and to try to push God to do things according to our time frame. The anecdote to all of this is to look at the lives portrayed in Hebrews 11 or in the biographies of Christians. Absorb their stories right now when you can't go out. Spend time reading these things and draw proper conclusions. It's really, really hard to find a saint who didn't need to exercise patience. The Christian faith gives us a long-term perspective. We look ahead, God has something for us, and we practice patience in waiting. And finally, Receiving the inner quality of patience comes from the Holy Spirit. Paul writes in Galatians 5, 22 and 23, but the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Now that is really a relief for me. We can't just produce patience if we don't have any. You just can't say, well, today I'm going to be patient. Well, not if you're impatient. Well, what can we do when we come to our human limits? What should we do then? Well, ask the Spirit to give us more of this kind of fruit. And I think in the asking, it means to be ready to receive it, make room for patience. Sometimes we need to maybe change things. How can I adjust my inner desires and demands? At the moment in this pandemic, we all need to shift our gears down a notch or two. And when we do that, we can be more able to let patience have its perfect way within us. The truth is, is that the Spirit can enable us, especially when we are at the end of our own strength. 
And you know, really, perhaps this is the only way the Holy Spirit can work in us. How else can he have access if we think we're all in charge, have everything we need, and don't need anything divine? When we come to our limits, the edges of ourself, then we can turn and ask the Lord to give us what we really don't have. In this sense, we can ask for patience. Paul said, when I am weak, then I am strong. Now, what the, is the difference between being weak and that actually means you're strong? The quantity of the Spirit's work in our lives helps that to happen. If we take time to pray in these days, and with a pandemic, we're supposed to stay home more. Maybe that's the perfect time to pray more, to read God's word more, to read Christian biographies more, and ask the Spirit to give us all the necessary patience we need just for today. You know, and that'll be enough. Give us this day our daily bread. Faith is lived with patience. And I conclude with this idea that I read from a writer who had written this in a novel. I can stick artificial flowers on this tree that will not flower. Or I can create the conditions in which the tree is likely to flower naturally. I may have to wait longer for my real flowers, but they are the only true ones. <laughs> Patience, you see, is in this waiting process and it creates the conditions in which true faith can grow. Let us pray together. Father, we want to thank you for this word that encourages us today in this pandemic to have the patience we need to live through this time frame and develop and nurture our faith. Oh Lord, help us because we're not very good at this. We don't like to wait. We tend to be impatient and we simply want things instantly. I pray that you'll help all of us who claim to be to belong to you, to let patience work in us the things that we need to have true faith in our lives. Help us with this, Lord, even in this new year and new week, we pray. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion and fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.